Hello and welcome to Fedor, a place where we'll come and then we are inspired by the reality and the audacity and the authority of the Word of God. I believe the greatest need of man for this time is to be in alignment with what God is prepared to do and what God is doing even amongst us. All right, if this is your first time here and you are joining via Mixella YouTube, I want you to follow us, um, click the notification button on YouTube so that you can know whenever we update or upload any of our inspiring even sermons uh, that will do you good. We are called to empower the people to live for Jesus and that's our mandate and that's what we have been doing and I'm sure and I trust that the year supernatural living, that's the word the Lord has given us for this year and I'm super excited at what the Lord has begun to do even amongst us. We hear again and again testimonies of miracles, uh, of healing, so uh, testimonies of God just being there. The presence of God has been our succor even in this season and I would like you to be a part even of what the Lord is doing in this season. He has said we have become partakers even of the, of the divine nature and that's what we have been experiencing as a people, is what we have been experiencing as a church uh, and I want to encourage you to be a part even of this. Today we want to go further and, and, and further with God. Uh, yesterday is our time for prayer meeting and today we just want to look again into the word of God uh, because you see he sent for his word uh, and his word heal and deliver them from all their infirmities. Every time the opportunity comes to hear the word of God is an opportunity for change, an opportunity for transformation, an opportunity for your life even to be renewed and for God to do that which he alone can do even in your life, even in your life. Uh, um, do me a favor, invite somebody, um, let me know somebody, let somebody know, um, send this link to somebody. This is really going to bless you. I have a word from God that will transform your life. And I know it, it seems like that's what pastors say, it's almost become like a facade. But this time around, I'm sure that what you're about to hear will put your life on a whole new horizon. You begin to soar and you begin to walk in the realm, even the realm of God. I believe one of the things God has called us to be is God has called believers to be supernatural everything that happened to you since you became born again even your born again experience is supernatural how that a man did not change in, in body did not change in height or in weight uh, but he had become new Bob says, if any man be in Christ is a new creature all things are past and all things are new send this link to somebody let somebody know that this has begun right I want to begin our conversation together today by looking at the portion of scripture Luke chapter 5 uh, uh, we read verses 12 to 18 Luke chapter 5 and then we read verses 12 to 18 the Bible says and it happened and it happened when he was in a certain city that behold a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and he fell on his face and implored him saying Lord if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I'm willing. Be cleansed. The Bible says immediately. Uh, you, if, if you're using a physical Bible, underline that. Um, underline, I like that in your Bible, whether you're using a soft copy. The Bible says immediately the leprosy left him. How is that possible? Logically, that cannot be explained. It just tells you that when a man encountered the gift of the person of Jesus, his life is transformed. Uh, and the Bible says, and he charged him, tell no one. But go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. Now, this is why we testify. As a testimony to them, this is why we testify. So that men can see. Uh, it's not that everyone can see. Everyone knows when a miracle happens. But so that men can see that God still work wonders and do miracles amongst us. Uh, verse 15 says, however, the report went around concerning him all the more. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Now, you need to note this, that scripture says they came together to hear, right? So wherever the word of the Lord is truly preached, uh, uh, wherever there is signs and wonders, there must first be the propagation of the gospel of the Christ. Uh, that's a simple proof uh, that the spirit of personal is the spirit of God. Scripture says, and great multitude came together to hear, and to be healed by him uh, of their infirmities. Uh, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Now we see something in the life of Jesus. Scripture says Jesus cleanses a leper in this place. He didn't cleanse the leper by just, uh, by just praying or, 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 or saying, come, let me fast and over. You would see a man, a, a, a man who, because Jesus lived on the earth as man. You see a man who constantly was walking in the supernatural. You find a man who was constantly living in the supernatural. Bible says the leper came to him. And he said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me whole. 
And he, he was more than willing. He touched him. Scripture says, and the man was flesh. That's supernatural. That's the miracle. Sir. That's something you cannot explain by human mind. But this is where I'm going. Scripture says that Jesus, after he had done that, and in verse 16, the Bible says, so he himself offered. Often we drew into the wilderness uh, and prayed. Jesus often we drew into the wilderness and uh, prayed. Uh, Jesus walked in the supernatural. But much more than that, Jesus showed us uh, how to maintain the supernatural uh, in our lives. How can I maintain a supernatural walk? How can I keep working in signs and wonders? Uh, how can I keep... Uh, keep manifesting that supernatural nature? How can I keep manifesting um, the nature of God? How can it be fully expressed in me on a constant and consistent basis? That's what I want to speak about today. That's what I want to speak about today. I'm speaking on maintaining the supernatural. Maintaining the supernatural. Shall we pray? Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the world will give light, give understanding to us as simple folks. Father, I've come as it's written, oh God. Uh, to, to just speak your word, to share your word and to teach your people, empower them to be all you have in mind, even at their creation. Father, I ask, oh God, that my, your word will go forth with grace, you to go forth with power. And after now, oh God, your people will be better people. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, and amen. Maintaining the supernatural. And you see, Jesus again is our pattern. And Jesus again must continually be our example. Oh, men can show us the way of the Christ. But listen to this. That is why the Synoptic Gospel should be one of the books the believer must read again and again. Because in that book, you will find how Jesus lived his life. You will find how Jesus transfer, tra traversed uh, even this world. You will find how Jesus walked in the supernatural. And this is very essential. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, 1 Corinthians 4 verse 16, Paul writing to Christians at Corinth, he said, Be ye imitators of me as I am of Christ. He meant, listen, I'm an example. I know. But to the extent of which I follow Jesus, that's what you should follow. Therefore, I believe that we must constantly look at the person of Christ. We must see how he lived his life. We must see uh, his pattern in ministry. How did he work in the supernatural? Because if we do these things, uh, then we'll also be able to get the results that he got. The Bible says in 14, 12 John, he said, greater works than these shall you also do. For we, for us to maintain greater works, for us to see great works, uh, just like the Christ saw great works. Uh, one of the things we must do is that we must learn to walk even as he walked. Um, and the, this portion of scriptures that we read today offer us a profound insight into the life of Jesus. And now that he constantly lived and maintained the supernatural. The supernatural is something you have to learn to maintain. How did he maintain the supernatural? Scripture says in verse 16 that he consistently went, separated himself and prayed. It gave us a clue as to how the Christ maintained the supernatural. Today I want to share with you on how you can maintain the supernatural. How can I constantly live in signs and wonders? Uh, what do I need to do in order that I may see the miraculous on a daily basis? What do I need to do to constantly walk in the supernatural? You know, I've seen people and I've met folks and guys who, you know, they lay hands on the sick, they are healed. Uh, and because they were able to do that three years ago, in three years they have not been able to do that anymore. Oh, they, they had visions of God. There were seasons of their life that they had visions of God. But they have come to a point in their life now that they couldn't find, they can't find visions. They can't hear God anymore. So it, it's perturbing to them because they normally easily hear God. But now they can discern His voice. They can hear Him and they do not know the way in which He takes. So for them, it's confusing. They are wondering what's going on. What have I done that I've missed out on the move of God? Have I really missed out on the supernatural work of the Father? What is, what's going on with my life? Uh, you know, when I was going in things of God, I taught uh, that to operate in the supernatural. I was taught, uh, and I also taught that to operate in the supernatural, you must constantly be fasting. I remember seasons and times that when we had to do deliverance, cast out devils, we would be fasting. And, and uh, I remember that occasion where somebody came uh, and, and the person came and told us it's an emergency and we had hit. And then we begin to question ourselves that is this thing about fasting or is it about a nature that we already carry in God? Uh, you understand what I'm saying? So people will not do deliverance uh, because they have eaten. <laughs> uh, you see, there is a biblical method to operating and maintaining the supernatural. There's a biblical method. There's a way the scripture puts down and clearly how you can maintain the supernatural. So that as you walked in the supernatural years ago, you can walk in the supernatural today. 
as far as I can tell, it's been more than a decade of working in the supernatural. And I want to share with you from the pages of scripture, from my experience, how is it that you can maintain the supernatural over your life? Somebody say, I just want to, I'm in a good place right now. I love how I pray and I sense that God is in this place. How I pray and I easily contact God. I don't want to miss out on these things. I, I don't want to get to a space or a place uh, where I do not feel him or I do not sense him anymore. I just love this place that I am. I love the place where I am spiritually. How can I maintain these supernatural experiences uh, that I've been having? Uh, there is a biblical method to it. But before I share that with you, I know that's what you want to hear. I want to also show you something that I call the enemies of the supernatural. The enemies of the supernatural. Listen, dear friends, uh, even when you maintain um, the supernatural atmosphere around you, when you do the things you need to do that maintains the supernatural, but you still have in your life what I call the enemies of the supernatural, you will find out that you will not be able to walk in supernatural. You will not be able to see your signs and no wonders. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 18, me and my children, we are for signs and wonders. How is it that believers are no longer seeing their signs and seeing their wonders? Because at certain times there are enemies of the supernatural that the devil has planted in the life of believers uh, to ensure that the believers stop moving in a trajectory that is heavenward. That is heavenward. And the first uh, enemy of the supernatural I want to quickly mention to you is ignorance. They say the devil hates revelation and knowledge. Because it leads to deliverance and freedom. Listen, God's power may come upon you suddenly. But for you to maintain the power of the Lord in your life, you need revelation. You need knowledge. And the devil will understand this. The Bible says in 5.13 of the book of Isaiah, say, my people have entered captivity for lack of knowledge. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Oh, that the soul be without knowledge is not good. 19.2 of the book of Proverbs. Listen, dear friends, the devil understands that one of the ways in which he can keep believers in captivity is to keep them in perpetual ignorance. Perpetual ignorance. The devil knows. Knows. He keeps in ignorance. The Bible says in Psalms 82, and you begin to read from verse 5, Psalm 82, and then you begin to read from verse 5. Uh, he said, have I not said, ye are gods and all of you children of the most high God? He said, but you would die, you fall like men and die like one of the princes. Uh, he said, why? He said, because they know nothing that they understand. Uh, he said, the whole world uh, woke up in darkness. Uh, why is it that they will have that kind of end? The Bible says because they know not, neither do they understand. You see, people perish for lack of knowledge. You are not able to walk in the supernatural because you do not understand how the supernatural operates. You are not able to walk in the supernatural or to assess certain things that Jesus has done on the cross because you are not able to understand what those things are. It takes revelation to access even the treasures of God. It takes revelation. Awareness is the key even to authority in this kingdom. What you don't know, you can have. Uh, the devil knows that freedom is in knowledge. The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth that you know will set you free. It is through the book of John. Therefore, he doesn't mind us doing anything. He, he, he doesn't mind you having spiritual activity. He doesn't mind you serving in church. He doesn't mind you. These things are good. But you see, the devil does not want you to do things that will ensure that you gain knowledge. At certain times, he will even allow you to pray. In as much as you are not standing on the word of God. It, that's why many believers have issues with studying scriptures. The, the devil will allow you to do many things. But when it comes to studying scriptures, you start becoming drowsy. You want to sleep. When it comes to reading scriptures, you are certainly bored. When it comes to reading scriptures, you remember 101 things that you ought to do. This is the game plan of the enemy. He wants to put you in perpetual ignorance. You have to shut him down this year. If you are going to walk in the supernatural, access all that God has in mind for you. Then you've got to shut down the devil. The devil final tool against a generation is ignorance. That we can be in the midst of knowledge and yet we are still ignorant. We can be in the midst and the vastness of knowledge. We're surrounded with so much knowledge. Yet we are ignorant. The Bible says uh, that this is the ways by which we become partakers of the divine nature. True knowledge. True knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1. We get to read verse 3 to verse 4. You see, true knowledge. Ignorance is a bane to walking in the supernatural. Ignorance is the bane to access the resources of heaven. Ignorance is the bane to take that which God has apportioned for you. Number two, enemy of the supernatural. Number two is pride. Listen to this. Pride is the prime enemy of the supernatural. The devil understands that when pride comes to a man, he doesn't have to do anything again. Listen, when a man begins to walk in pride, when, when a man becomes prideful, 
the devil stops working in that person's life. Because the devil understands that when a man has become proud, his work is done. His work is done. Why? Because even God becomes the person's enemy. He becomes the dead person's enemy. So if the devil can lift you up to that place of pride, he can stop working in your life. Because it means that his work is done. His work is done. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says God loves the humble, but he resists the proud. You see, for God to resist you, I don't know where else you can go. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, the same thing was said. You see, he resists the proud. The devil understands that, you see, if you have become a resist, if God becomes a resistance, God, God just resists you. God just fights you. God repels you. His work is done. The Bible says in 138.6 of Psalms, Though the Lord is on high, yet he regards the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Look at that. God keeps distance from, that, from him who is proud. God keeps distance from him who is proud. He keeps a distance. Oh, somebody say, why is God so far from me? Pride. The only place I see God being far from people in scriptures is because of pride. He resists the proud. He resists the proud. And the devil understands this. You see, the moment you begin to say, you know, that man was healed by my power. You know, we are so powerful. Even when I just walk in, pride sets in, and you discover that you stop walking as you ought to walk in the supernatural. You shut the gates to much more in God. You, you just aim yourself in to little. Why? Because pride has taken prime place in your life. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 12. For the day of the Lord of all shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Can you see that? The day of the Lord shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. It shall be brought low. One prime enemy of the supernatural is pride. To assess and maintain the supernatural power of God, you must maintain the spirit of humility. Nothing keeps God from a life than pride. The devil knows this, and he wants to use this against you. And he knows this. Ezekiel chapter 28. The devil was created in all beauty until the day that wickedness was found in him. And when wickedness was found in him, he was cast down. The devil knows. He knows that when pride and haughtiness enters the heart, the Lord will cast the person down. He can't take it. You cannot put yourself and God on a throne. It has to be God alone. When he does anything, you have to clip the glory and keep it to God. He may have used your hand. He may have used your feet. He might have used your word, but it's still Jesus. Everything we say without him is just words. It's just letters. What made it life-giving is the Holy Ghost. We must therefore remember to give him all the glory. Number three, apart from pride, apart from ignorance, what other enemy of the anointing of the supernatural do we have? Offenses and bitterness. Offenses and bitterness. What I'm sharing with you it's the way the devil wins people with people. He knows he can't battle against God. He understands that the calling of God upon your life is irrevocable. He understands that God does not call without backing up. He knows that you are powerful. He knows uh, that God has invested in you authority in Christ Jesus by the finished works of Calvary. He understands these things. Therefore, he knows he can't stop you. But he can begin to... Apply his strategies to ensure that you are the one who stops yourself. And the third thing that stops us in our way to the supernatural, the third thing, is offenses and bitterness. It's offenses and bitterness. For he knows that the things of God works via law. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, faith works by law. Ephesians chapter 4, 29-32, Paul was writing to the Christians at, at, at Ephesus. And he said, let no corrupt word. Proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the heirs, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. 31 says, let all bitterness. Say, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And then in context, he went further and said, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. They be kind to one another, forgiving one another, as even God in Christ forgave you. Hebrews chapter 12, 15 to 17, the Bible says again, listen, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, 
lest any root of bitterness. You see, bitterness is a seed. It's a seed that when it is planted, it has a root. When it is nourished, it, it becomes a tree. When it is watered, it starts having fruit. That's what bitterness is. But here is what, what, what the writer of Hebrews said. He said, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring in us cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. What should you do? Cut it off. That's what somebody said. I don't say that. When you see a root of bitterness, roots are not cut off. Roots are uprooted. They have to be uprooted. That's, that's an enemy of the supernatural. You have to uproot it. Let there be any, any fornicator, profane person like Esau, who for one muscle of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. He couldn't find it. The faster you get rid of offense, the easier it is for you to grow. The easier it is for you to grow. And for me, it's, it's very telling. Many years ago, the Lord gave me a vision as it concerns bitterness and offense. And every time I remember this, I, I uproot everything. I uproot everything. Many years ago, I had a vision of God. And I was in this place where they sell Amala. I will not forget Amala is an African food um, that goes with um, a soup called uh, Abula. Uh, right? So I, I was in that place and then they served uh, Amala for me and I, I collected it. And I remember I was going to the place where they were supposed to sell, to serve me the, the soup. And I got there. And, and, and strangely, the soup was served in a polythene nylon. Um, that means the polythene nylon. Um, and, and they served it there. And I collected it with the amal on the other side. And I began to go out. And there was this small animal, a creature like a demon, and that, that, that just ran towards me and took the thing. And by the time he took it, the, the, the soup started leaking. The, the polythene nylon started leaking. And I flung the thing away. And then he started licking. Then I went back and they gave me another one. And as they gave me another one, this demon came back again. This bean came back again. Took the line, opened it, opened it, put the edges around it with his fingers and ran away. And the thing started licking again. I think after the third time I woke up, I came out of it. And then I began to say, oh Lord, what is this? And the Lord said to me, he said, every time I anoint you, Every time I anoint you, every time I pour my spirit upon you, he said, bitterness and offense uh, will ensure that that anointing begins to leak. The same way that soup could not get the job done. It couldn't get to the place where you need it. He said, that is the same way the anointing leaks over anyone who lives in bitterness and offense. They do not have enough to get the job done. Saul lost his kingship and his ministry because he was offended at David. He left the primary purpose of kingship and began to pursue after David. David, an offense will make you leave the things of God or the things God has called you to and begin to chase the ordinary. Listen, when you walk and make decisions in bitterness, you are walking in insanity. A little offense taken, a little insanity gained. Because it's insane. It's insane for Saul to, to actually leave his throne and be chasing after death. I mean, you are the king of Israel. Why are you chasing? Because someone sang a song? No, oh, it's insanity. Left the walk of kingship. When they left the walk of the kingdom and begin to chase the small boy. Personally, I've discovered that nothing takes away the grace and the anointing of God. Like walking in offense. I've seen it. I've seen it manifested. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. How good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the Lord that came upon Aaron. And touch even his garments and, and his birds uh, and flow, flow down even to the touch the air moving of his garments. We need to watch over that. Number four is rebellion and false teaching. Another enemy of the supernatural is rebellion against the spirit of Christ. Anytime we act in disobedience to God, we are proclaiming our independence from him. The Lord says, go pray for that person. He said, no. He doesn't deserve it. You see, whenever we do that, remember the man Ananias? The Lord, the Lord said to Ananias, go pray for Saul. He had many reasons not to go. He had many reasons because Saul had been persecuting the church. But he went. Why? Because he lived in obedience to the Christ. You see, 
the, the supernatural work is not the work of logic. It's the work of the Spirit. You need to listen to the Holy Ghost. For Samuel 15, 22 to 23, the Bible says, So Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in both offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, be all to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the father of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is an iniquity, and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. You see, these are the things that the devil puts in place. He understands. He knows. So he just put these things in place. Right? I can't stop them. I know they are an enemy of God. I know that like, they are unstoppable. I know they can do anything they want to do. I know they are empowered by the Holy Ghost. I know Jesus backs them up. I know they have the backing of God the Father. Whatever it is they are proposed to do, they will do. But I know how to stop them. And the devil comes with these strategies to stop believers from attaining to the fullness of the stature of the Christ. Uh, oh, he stops us from seeing signs and wonders and working in the miraculous. Every move of God has been stopped by bitterness, offense, rebellion, uh, unforgiveness. Uh, every move of God uh, has been stopped by ignorance and by pride. Every move of God. The, the idea of God is not that any revival stops. But the reason revival stops and any move of God stops is because the devil introduces the strategy of ignorance, pride, bitterness, unforgiveness. And because people become and think they have become, they begin to exist without the Christ. They, they live their life independent of the Christ. If you watch over these things, you will discover you can't maintain the supernatural. Can I quickly equip you? That's just the enemies of the supernatural. How do I maintain the supernatural? Now, let me start by saying, let's assume that you bought a Toyota Land Cruiser 2020. Uh, I, I mean, that's a powerful SUV. That car can do many things for you. But now let's take it that you have not serviced that car for two years. You didn't service that car for two years. Never serviced the engine, never changed the oil. You know, you are going to run the risk of engine damage, brake failures, reduced capacity, decreased value, or complete breaking down, breaking down of that vehicle. Listen, and this is what has happened to many people. We have become a people whose spiritual engine are broken down because we have deceased from servicing it. We have deceased from servicing it. You've got to do certain things if your energy will be renewed. The ego will have uh, to drop certain weight. Uh, it will have to remove wings uh, so that it can take new wings and fly again. Uh, I've walked in the power of the Lord before. I need to walk in it again. I've seen signs and wonders before. What's going on? How can you constantly maintain the oil? The first one is that to maintain the supernatural, you must maintain the oil of prayer. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse 16, which is our anchor verse. So he himself withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Luke chapter 5 verse 16. Jesus prayed. This is not a time for us to stop praying. Listen to these guys. This is not a time to stop praying. Jesus, the Bible says, walked in the supernatural. He healed in Luke chapter 5. That leper, the man with leprosy. And instead of going on and celebrating and rejoicing and say, I have, I have it now. Bible says in the midnight, in the evening, uh, he separated them and went to pray. It takes prayer to maintain what prayer batted. It takes prayer to maintain what is batted by prayer. Listen, if you want to maintain something supernatural by the works of the flesh or by logic or by human strategy, it will fail. Many times we try to box God in. But whatever you got by the Spirit, you will maintain by the Spirit. Whatever you got by prayer, you will maintain by prayer. It takes prayer to keep working in the supernatural. Listen, uh, despite Jesus' business, despite his demands in ministry, he withdrew to pray. Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 35. Scripture says he withdrew to pray. Luke 18, 1, he said a parable to the end that men ought always, always to pray and not to faint. You must maintain the oil of prayer. We must withdraw to pray. Uh, the disciples understood this. Uh, the book of Acts is called the Act of the Apostles. Uh, I love to call it the Act of the Holy Spirit via the Apostles. Uh, but there is a secret in that verse. Uh, Bible says the demand increased in ministry as the ministry grew and enlarged. Uh, and there were issues in the church. Acts chapter 6. Uh, certain men came, certain widows uh, had complaints. Men came to complain uh, about how certain widows uh, were neglected in the serving of tables. Uh, but listen, dear friends, 
hands. The disciples, they understood that all these works, we can only maintain it by the ministry of prayers. It cannot be maintained by strategy. It can be maintained by leadership meetings. All of that may be good. Hallelujah. But what did they do? They said, we shall devote ourselves. Acts chapter 6 verse 4 to prayer and the ministry of the word. Dear friends, you are not too busy to devote time to prayers. No one is too busy to devote time to prayers. The reason you have not been praying is because you have not seen it as an essential requirement. The moment you believe and you know it's a sine qua non to your existence, then you begin to pray. Prayer is key for a believer that will see signs, wonders and miracles. For a believer that will see Christ battered in him for you to be formed into the fullness of the image of the Christ. You need to pray. Prayer is not a maybe for the believer. Prayer is a compulsion. What is battered in prayers will be maintained by prayer. And that's the first oil. The first oil of maintenance. How do I maintain the supernatural? That's the first oil. And the second one, the oil of the word of God. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Matthew 7 and then verse 24. Let's read that together, ladies and gentlemen. Matthew chapter 7, and then verse 24. Very key, very important portion of scriptures. The Bible says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, how we liken to him, liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. I preach a message called the house on the rock. Listen, the word of God is the foundation for the miraculous. Listen, there is the miraculous, the devil's way. There is the miraculous, the God way. The miraculous, the God way has only one foundation. Huh? It is the word of God. Somebody say it is the name of Jesus. I tell you, it is the name uh, that has its expression uh, after the revelation, uh, even derived from the word of God. Uh, except to build on the word, we are not building uh, Except to build by the wall. Whatever it is we build, we not pass the test of time. The test of every walk is conformity with the word of God. The test of every walk is conformity with the word of God. Acts chapter 6 verse 4. Disciples said, like I said before, we devote ourselves even to prayers and the ministry of the word of God. Whatever is not of the word of God cannot be trusted. The only proof that is of the word is that it is found in the word. The only proof that is of the word is that it is found in the word. Healing is found in the word. Promotion is found in the word. Favor is found in the word. Deliverance is found in the word. Liberation is found in the word. Is it because we found it there? We believe it and we trust it. Stay in the word, read the word. The word is the very essence of the Christ. You cannot be called to represent him when you do not know him. Be a student of the Bible. That's how to maintain the supernatural. Be in love with the word of God. Be a student of the word of God. This year, 2024, let the word of the Lord, let it ginger you. Be gingered by the word. Let the word motivate you. Let the word inspire you. Have a covenant with the word of God. Live by the word. Determine to live by the word. Anything that is outside of the word, resist it. Believe what the word says. Stay in Christ. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And God was the word. It was in the very beginning with God. And all things were formed and framed even by him. Understand that. The word of God is the person of Christ. Number three. How do I maintain the supernatural? Fellowship with the Christ. Fellowship with the Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. Oh, that's what we call the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Ghost. The koinonia of the Spirit. That's what the Greek translated to be. The fellowship, the communion, the partnership and the participation of the Spirit. A man who works in the supernatural is a man who is in partnership with the Holy Ghost. He's in partnership with the Holy Ghost. He knows, I've got a senior partner. The paracletos. 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 I'm not alone. The spirit is with me. It's going on here. To have fellowship with the Holy Spirit is to commune with him. It's to be actively engaged in a relationship with him. It is to be a partner with him. We surrender our will in order to receive his guidance. We eat our tongue 
in order that he will pray and speak through us. And we give him our bodies to express the love of the Father and the grace of Jesus through us. What a king, what a God. What a king, what a God. And finally, number four. How do I maintain the supernatural? I have time for meditation and retreat. Our God loves quietness. Sometimes you must leave the bustle, the hustling. You must leave the noise and go to a place by his side. You must go to a place by his side. A place where you can hear him. I said it before. That one of the greatest dangers to the supernatural in our generation is our busyness. You must make yourself, you must unbusy yourself. There's a word like that. You must make yourself unbusy to hear God. To stay with him. To be in his presence. To commune with him. To just think about the wonders of God. When I survey that one draws works. <laughs> just survey the cross. Survey the works. Look deeply. Think deeply. Ponder on the things of the Christ. Ponder on the things Jesus did. Ponder. That's how to maintain the supernatural. The oil of the supernatural. The oil of prayers. Have your oil been serviced? Has your oil been serviced? The oil of prayer. The oil of the word of God. It leads to break down. The oil of fellowship with the Spirit. The oil of meditation. The oil of grace. Wherever you are, watching this from, hearing this from, can you begin to just, can you just say, Lord, I know better. I know better. I see you now. And I know you never moved. It was me that moved. Every time I do not see the works that I used to see them. Anytime I do not sense God like I used to sense Him. Anytime I do not see the supernatural operational as it used to be. I do not look on the outside. I look on the inside because I know God didn't move. I, I, I moved. Will you begin to say, Lord, I will not move anymore. God, I won't move. I will never be the same again. I'll never return. I've closed the door. I'll walk the path. I'll run the race. And I will never be the same again. Mezura valivra koshe kepeli adiada dosa. Reluka pelikra dododombra le kalivra dosa kapali adiada dosa. And I will never be the same again. Is there somebody saying, Lord, I'll show the path to ordinariness. I'll show the path. I'll close the door to kind of manifestations. I won't stop you in your, in your track, oh God. We stop God on the track with pride, with arrogance, with offense and bitterness. With sins, we will stop God on his track. Lord, I lay the track so that your power can move. Lord, I lay the track so that your grace can move. Is that your prayer? Lord, I will lay the track. I lay the track. This year is my year of supernatural living. I receive it as my testimony. I go forth and I walk in signs and wonders. No fear. I just go forth releasing the power of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And amen. And amen. What a time of heart. I'm sure this word has blessed you. Listen, many times what we do is that after we've listened to that word, we just say, oh, people have missed service. No, it's online. So they have not missed service. Send the link, share with somebody. This has blessed you. Comment on that place on YouTube. Don't just run away. Drop a comment. That will mean more people will see it. And more people will come and listen to this word of life. Listen, dear friends. Last week I shared on releasing the supernatural. And this is just about you maintaining it. And I said one of the key things you must do is don't be afraid to step out. Lay hands and speak boldly. Because the supernatural has prophetic sound dynamics to it. Therefore, don't be afraid to declare. 
Don't be afraid to speak. Don't be afraid to lay hands. I was so touched when a lady came. I was telling me, he said, I've been laying hands on people. Is there somebody just say, I'm sick and weak? I said, come here. I lay hands on them. And they are all. Glory to God. That's the essence of the Christian race. An expectation for the move of the supernatural. An expectation for the release of the supernatural. And this Sunday is going to be a blessed service at the Ransomed House. I'm going to share on dimensions of the supernatural. I want to begin by showing you a dimension. First, we start with a dimension of the presence of the Christ. And it's going to be an awesome time in God's presence. Like I've encouraged our people, you're watching this, you're sick in your body, you know somebody who is sick, who is infirmed, who needs a touch of God, or you are just in a place where you are spiritually with it, and you need a fresh breath of heaven. Come to church on Sunday and the Spirit uh, is waiting for you. I tell you that the table of fat feast, uh, the Spirit and the bride says, come, I wait to see you. It's going to be an awesome time uh, in the presence of God. Come uh, and experience the supernatural. Come and see Jesus uh, who still heals, who still do things, uh, who still set free. He's waiting for you and the church of God. He's waiting to see you. Number 22, Isaac Alukolo Street, Nara Bet Head Office. Igwe for Lekki is where we are. There are some numbers after now. You can see on your screen. You can call any of those numbers. Allen number that same. You can call him. Or you can also speak even to Tofeinti. And they will be able to help you get to church. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. I'll see you again, Fed Up, next week. Cheers. <laughs>